<laughs> Hello. Hey. Hey. Hello, and welcome to a tale of blood and song. We begin our journey tonight in the Chinella Republic, in the sleepy roadside hamlet of Redwater. The sun has just set below the olive groves, the cicadas have grown quiet, and the townsfolk have returned from their day in the fields, and they've begun to celebrate the festival of the falling leaves. They are not alone, for earlier that day, several travellers had also found their way to Redwater, to the hostel to be exact, and they've been persuaded to join in the festivities. Let's see how they're getting on. Redwater's a small place, and when the travellers were told that there was a festival happening, they were expecting something not quite this. They weren't really expecting a central bonfire around which there was a tiny wooden board with a smattering of people dancing. When they were told there would be drinking games, they didn't think it would be one table with two old men and a nephew sat at it. When they were told that there would be an amphitheatre of story, they thought it would be an amphitheatre, as in the other Chanelan stories, not two logs around the fire pit. But here they are nonetheless. And we begin with the great athletic challenge. Or rather, the pole that the villagers greased up and then tied an old scarf to the top of, around which are gathered several young men and one rather curious stranger. Bradley, if you could introduce your character, please. My name is Octavius Aquila, and I am an ex-soldier of the Cinella, Cinella Republic. And I have just ended my service in the Chinella army. I'm looking for a purpose in life after certain events meant that I have lost faith in my country. And so my journey begins on the day of my service ending. And begin it does. It begins with you seeing these young men scrabbling up and failing to get the scarf tied to the top. A few of the young women standing around are laughing and pointing at them as they slip and slide. Would you like to attempt to climb? Children? Why, this is a man's game. Surely children cannot climb this pole. I will show you how it's done. <laughs> and I will attempt to climb the pole. Okay. Uh, could you please make me a dexterity check at disadvantage as this pipe uh, this pole is greased up after the rule so as you're attempting to climb a few of these young boys are well I say young boys one of them's 21 he's sitting down on the ground his kind of back breeze goes you're never gonna make it watch this can only go well only I go rolled well. seven <laughs> so as you start to climb, you climb up about five feet of this 20-foot pole, and then you just start to slide down, and you hear a little bit of snickering from the boys. <laughs> Told you you'd never make it. Would you like to continue, or will you let your Can pride I get the better? Can I discreetly cast Frostbite on the pole to freeze the Make a sleight of hand check for me. Yeah, is that a discreet spell? I don't know. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ten. Okay. As you, uh, your hands are around this greased up pole, you mutter an incantation and sh shards of ice <laughs> come out, not covering the entire pole, but enough for you to kind of grip and not slide down. Luckily, the boorish peasants down below don't have the greatest observation skills in the world, and they quieten down as you are now stationary on the pole. Could you make me a straight dexterity check now, please? That is a 24. And with that, you scamper up. The grease slows you down, but you've got enough of the ice stuck to your hands now that it freezes with every step and every pole up. As you reach the top, you rip away the maiden's scarf and wave it triumphantly. What would you like to do next? See, this is easy. And then I slide back down the pole as quickly as I can. Um, you see. I hand the maiden's scarf to the crying child that said I couldn't do it. And I just, I walk off then to find the bar. Okay, so uh, just behind you, in fact, sort of to your right is 
Well, bar is a strong word. It is a table around which are sat various old men, uh, one of whom kind of quite grey in the beard, filthy face and looking uh, grumpy. And everyone's looking at the newcomer. Brian, could you tell us about this newcomer, please? Absolutely. Uh, all right, everyone. My name is Ripper. I have uh, been traveling, you know, from quite far. Um, coming to this town, you know, uh, this festival is pretty amazing. And uh, and yeah, I right, listen, right? I want to I want to tell you guys. I want to tell you guys a story, right? And I think because I hadn't prepared anything, only the punchline, which is classic, right? Um, Ripper's telling this this grandiose tale of uh, a farm hand at a time he had when he was uh, at a farm and it ends with him going so there was milk coming out of my nose and then this guy walks along and goes is this your punnet of strawberries <laughs> <laughs> well, roll me a performance check let's see how these <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is going to be performance did you say i certainly did 21 with that, the uh, two youth burst into roaring laughter and hand over another tankard of froth frothing ale. The old man doesn't crack a smile. He What's goes, wrong, old? What's wrong, old man? You had, had your time running around old farms, punnets of strawberries and all that. No, I understood it. Just, uh, you know, it's easy for you to make light when you're young, but life's about responsibility, about focus. Can't be putting ideas in these young ones' minds. You don't get all by running around the world. You get it by mining it. Now, I totally understand that, right? But you can get good ore from all around the world, providing you grease the right palms or the right poles. Am I right? I've seen what you guys have done up there with that guy with the flag. Yeah? So you just got to know <laughs> that influence comes from wherever you are and you need to make good connections with people and people trust you. Tell a funny story. Share a tank of the bell. Thanks for that, by the way. And, you know, slowly the, the world gets better and better place because people aren't spending their time mining and down shafts and whatever else, you know. They're out. They're enjoying. They're chatting. They're networking. They're having fun. That's what I want to do. You know, that's what I want to be. I want, I want everyone to know about the things that I do. I want to be, you know, I want the king to listen to me. Or, well, maybe not the king. Whoever it, whatever monarchy it is, I'll, I'll figure it out on the way. The two younger men, who are around your age, are just wrapped, and uh, one of them is looking at you going, Oh, I, I would really love to leave the town, but uh, he keeps glancing over at the elderly man and goes, You're not leaving, son. Someone's got to sift the ore. Oh, well, good luck on your journey at least, the younger man says to you. Thank you very much, and I hope one day you get to have a grand adventure. And as you start drinking together, it's, uh, we shift across the bonfire as you glance down um, south and you see about five children, no, six children sat around the bonfire. They are at the feet of a middle-aged orc. You can see her auburn hair, you can see uh, olive skin, and she's telling a story. Except when you look at the children, one of them's not actually a child. There's something a little different about them. Christine, could you introduce your character, please? I will. Um, so uh, what's probably a bit different about this child that you see is that her skin is slightly red. Ooh, bear with. <laughs> Sorry. That's the first book. Oh. It's all right. We're not live. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> slightly dusky red um she's also got what looks to be uh one of the biggest backpacks you would ever see on a child next to her uh the backpack is covered in uh little adventuring things which makes you think that she's she's definitely a traveler um she's also got uh big old goggles sat on top of her head um and then on her face are some very high prescription glasses <laughs> Um, but they're 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 almost homemade. They 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 look like they've been made out of uh, um, out of wood almost with a little lens in there. And um, she is absolutely wrapped in this story. 
because she's grinning from ear to ear. Um, she's probably more engaged than the children. Um, she's got uh, a lovely mug of tea in her hands as well, um, which is the favourite way to enjoy stories. Um, and that's what you see at the moment. Um, what you might not, you might notice that she's a bit dusty because she's been travelling quite a way to come here. Um, and yeah, she is, uh, she's wearing a headscarf as well. And if you look very closely, you probably see that her ears were slightly larger than human ears. Um, in fact, there might almost be no ears, um, but only if you look very closely. Fantastic. And as you are enjoying the story, the uh, story comes to an end and the children go, Celia, Celia, please tell us another one. And the mother, uh, the orc turns and says, oh, children okay one more and then i've really got to go and look after the festival i am the presidious after all and she turns uh, to you and says however stranger it would be our pleasure if you could choose the story would you rather hear the tale of a hero or the tale of a god oh i'd love to hear a story about a god absolutely please do okay and Tonight, I'm going to tell you a tale of Carrion, the god of the air. Once upon a time, there was a great evil that roamed the land, and it came across the sea to the west. It flooded over our world, causing corruption and leaving death wherever it went. Carrion took pity on the people, seeing their plight, and he turned into a mighty eagle, lightning flashing from his talons and thunder under his beating wings. He flew to the sea, and he turned it into a mighty storm that no one could cross. And that, children, is how we came to have the Sea of Storms. That's amazing! I'd never heard that one before. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to put that in my book. I'm going to write that. I've got a little book. I'm going to write that in my book. Hold on. Okay, great. Lightning and, st and storm. Righto. Got it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And as uh, you turn to write it in your book, you your eye catches on the western side of this um, field a small area set aside for dancing, and you see a tall, well-muscled woman in blacksmith's leathers Dancing with a curious character. Becky, would you like to introduce your character, please? Okay, so um, as my character kind of approaches this woman to begin dancing, uh, they sort of very awkwardly kind of step forward. And at first they look just fairly average, unremarkable, you know, sort of tall, fairly slim, um, shockingly kind of white hair, almost silvery. Um, but the kind of face you just forget in a crowd. Uh, and then they open their mouth, and this happens. Hello, my name is Seed, and I'm a bard. Human bard. Like all humans, I enjoy humanoid entertainment. Could I take part in your humanoid entertainment? Um, y yeah, yeah, of course you can. But, uh, <laughs> you from Nirmengart? How did you know? Yeah, it's the furs and the accent. Oh, of course. I wear fur on my cloak because, you know, in Nurmiangard, otherwise I just sort of freeze up. Yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, lovely to have you in the town, if you wouldn't mind. I'm sorry. Obviously, as a human, I know exactly what you're doing here, but if you could just fill me in on the details. Oh, right, yes, yeah, you don't have this dance up, up there in the north. So this is called the two-step, and um, what we do is she sort of puts her hands on you and starts to show you the steps to the dance. Oh, I see, we're rhythmically moving to the music, and I'm supposed to rhythmically move to the music in the same way that you're rhythmically moving. Oh, no, if I do that, I'm just treading on your feet. Okay, um... Oh, I'm supposed to use the opposite foot. I'm so sorry. Oh dear, that's your foot again. I'm I'm really sorry about this. <laughs> Ob obviously, I've I've done this loads before. You know, as a human. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Anyway, shall we? And if you'd like to roll a performance check, we'll see how well this first dance goes. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, it is an 18. Okay. Oh, how would you 18. describe your 18 roll? So, um, as the kind of the music continues, at first, um, it looks like this poor woman is going to be black and blue. Um, but after a while, it's like watching someone really fit into a mirror image of the person opposite them. And it's like every time she moves, Seed is very much just kind of copying and moving in tandem with what she's doing. So there's no real sense of it being like a lead and a follow. It's just, you know, a perfect kind of copy. But it is a copy and it is kind of working. And then we move, uh, as this dance continues, we move a little further away. We draw back a little distance to just outside the centre circle, where there is a long line of torches, just lighting up the main thoroughfare. Along this, several children are playing, and we start to hear the sound of the fire in the background, the sound of the crowds. And we find there two figures, who are currently stood with small children all around them jumping up near them, holding what looks like a broken bit of wood. But as they start talking to them, what they say is, Please, sirs, please, sirs, we've, we've seen the uh, weapon you're carrying up. Can you help us fix this? And they've got what appears to be a makeshift bow. Hmm. Uh, well, uh, you can make a wonderful tune out of even the most broken of instruments. Maybe a more unique sound. Let me take a look. So Sixsmith is, uh, he's, a, he's a very gently commanding man, I think. Um, to look at him, he's got um, uh, hair that traditionally we would call an elephant's trunk. He's got um, tusk-like beard. So he's sort of channeling the animals. So you can sort of very clearly see that, and, and with his look as well, you can clearly see he's got interior blood, but he's a mix of somewhere else as well. And it's not quite clear um, whether he's channeling in his look his interior respect or maybe uh, his other heritage. Um, he's wearing very clearly the vibrant sort of off-duty camo colours of the um, interior army. Um, he's young but he acts older than he is and I think that's I think th as to why I think that's that's something you might have to find out. Yes, sit, sit, children. Sit round, watch my brother. He's very good with these things. He'll fix your bow and he'll show you how to use it. Um, and the slightly smaller, slightly lither figure next to Six Smith uh, called Lack um, in flowing sort of saffron coloured robes. He, uh, he sits down in the corner. He's, he's got the same kind of joy and puppy springness as the other children. And he sits down uh, very easily from standing straight into a cross-legged position. And he sits there perfectly still, but you can feel the buzz off him. He's really excited to watch his brother do something amazing with a stick. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make uh, Six Smith roll to fix the bow, because he knows exactly how to fix this bow. So he fixes it, and he has serviceable... Uh, it, it's not going to be the best, but it, mm. it will definitely do something. In excitement, the children run off and not having any formal military around here, they don't have anything particularly good to aim at, but they do manage to erect a large uh, bit of wood that they've been keeping for the fire. They managed to wriggle it away and they put it up around 60, 70 yards away and then run back and go, show us how to use it, please, sir. Got us quite a distance, brother. Well, you know, uh, you say that, but... And he looks around at the children and he goes, I've been killing blocks of wood since I was your age. And he, uh, and he pulls the bow, you know, he, f he feels it. He knows that if he misses, it's not going to be because he's not capable. He's just putting on a show for the kids. Um, and he tries to fire an arrow at the block of wood, the dangerous block of wood. Make me an attack roll, please. I shall indeed. Can't wait for this. He's always been a good shot. Children, always. So I'm just doing a straight d20. Straight d20. Uh, okay. Plus your dex mod. So that's... Oh, that's 21. 
<laughs> so without hesitation, you uh, look and you make a show of the fact that this wood, where it's bent, it's literally a tree branch with some twine tied to it. But you manage to grip it in a certain way and brace it against your shoulder. When you pull it back and you release it, this um, serviceable arrow flies completely true and manages to just chunk into a knot in the piece of wood perfectly 60 yards away and the children look up with a sense of awe on their face whoa See, I told can you show you. me how to do it no show me first ah uh, you know what would be good my brother you know i've trained in the army uh interior army i'm very far you did, from you did. here <laughs> i did i did um and uh i knew uh my two i see uh, second in command we call her freya wonderful uh, with the bow she played the bow uh, like a fiddle uh, and the fiddle like a bow, so it was very dangerous. Um, but <laughs> but uh, she um, she taught me how to use a bow. It's, it's why I'm so good. <laughs> but uh, she um, she taught me how to use a bow. It's, it's why I'm so good. But uh, I wonder if I've never seen my brother uh, since we were very young shoot a bow. We've only met up recently after a long time. So. I'd love oh. to see you, luck, uh, brother, little brother. Please. Um, I, I may need some help here. I'm, I'm definitely not as trained as you. I, um, which way does this point? And he like comedy pulls it the wrong way and like puts it over his head and like hands it to one of the children. Which, which way do I? Which way do I put this? Ah, <laughs> oh, very funny. He's a he's the joker of the two of us. Um, what did they teach you in that? that uh, you were at a school, weren't you? I was out, um, you know, it was hard in the army, but I learned a lot. You were in school, right? Where were Correct. you? Correct. Uh, I learned um, I learned meditations. I learned um, to be present, to see the world around me. Um, and I learned how to, um, how to go with the flow, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But any uh, real world experience, anything useful, you know? Oh, brother, I've never had any real world experience. <laughs> That's why they okay. sent me to school. <laughs> oh, mother would have loved this, the, uh, the bow and arrow, huh? the two of us together. No, she would have. She would have. You know what she used to say uh, about uh, your fortune? When your fortune is only gold... Then you make silver. Then you make silver. She, she always... That was her favourite, wasn't it? One of, of her favourites. Yeah, one yeah, of yeah, her yeah. favourites of all the phrases she had. Um, so uh, we, um, I saw a fortune tellers over there and it's not something that I would enjoy. It's a little uh, provincial I for would, me, you know. I, it, I lacks eyes light up. Well, mother would have done this. And oh. since we are on a pilgrimage, we feel um, maybe I should go and see the fortune teller. And he, um, yeah, okay. he turns around, grabs an arrow and shoots it at the wood, sort of nonchalantly as he walks away. <laughs> Make me an attack roll, please. Happy Dex mod. Oh, well, I rolled a 17 plus, yeah, 22. So we've all seen Disney's Robin Hood, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> there is that moment yes. where, um, in fact, Sixsmith, can you just make me a perception check? Oh, uh, seven. He doesn't like it very much. No. So as uh, you turn to make your way to the fortune teller. That's the moment that Lack decides to release his arrow and flies straight and true and splits the original arrow as it thunks straight into the middle of that knot again. Lack doesn't even look back. He just keeps walking. Um, I, I come on, six, let's get to the fortune teller. He sees it, but he goes, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe just your elbow was a little far out, you know, maybe just... You're right, just brother, it, it fell, it fell too you know? high, too high, too high. Yeah, 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 too okay, high, okay. Too Thank high. you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no thank worries. You, thank you, thank um, you. So as you walk back through, what we find is... Um, Did you just see that guy climb to the top of that grease? I'm pretty sure it froze. Is it getting cold around here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what mother always used to say about the cold? Yes, put put on two coats. Take one coat off. Exactly, exactly. You know, you don't need more than one coat. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, it's getting a little cold, isn't it? Let's go inside in the fortune tellers over here, I think. Okay, okay. So as you walk back into the centre circle, uh, the map should have loaded for you in Foundry now, ladies and gents. Mm. And uh, we see the area of the festival 
The fortune teller herself is over in our um, northwest corner. She's actually a, an old lady just sat around this fire, this brazier. And as you both approach, she looks up and sees Lack and says, You? Why don't you come and sit over here, dearie? I think it, I'd like to talk to you. It would be my honour, lady. And he, um, he granny, moves almost grace, granny. graciously. Granny! Granny, that's so kind. Thank you, Granny. You may call me Lack. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you, Lack. Come have a seat. And, and you're, you two must be related. You come and have a seat too. Ah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just here to listen. I, I don't, uh, you know, it's, uh, I respect what you do. I'm just here to support my, my brother, you know. That's okay. You just listen. Now, Lack was it. Yes, it is. And I'll sink down into that crouch that I can't do. Which is where your feet are flat on the <laughs> ground, and but Lack seems to do that really naturally. Okay, and uh, she's reaching out and just warming her hands over the coals of the brazier in front of him. She says, "Oh, you wouldn't mind just placing another log on for me, would you?" Of course, of course, Granny. And he takes a. As he does, could you roll a d6 for me, please? Okay. Four. So as you place this log, you're waiting for something and there's nothing as she just stares and we hear the crackle and the pop. And then she looks and she nods and goes, hmm, that log was from your past. I can tell from this that uncertainty plagues you. Does that seem accurate? In so many ways, Granny. In so many ways. Yes. Yes. Uncertainty. Many mysteries. Well, let's find out what they're about. Let's find out what your future holds. Would you pop another log on if there's a nice man? Okay, this fire might get a little hot, Granny. But, um, okay. And he puts another log on. And could you roll me a d10, please? Ooh. Get to use all my dice today. <laughs> Seven. Okay, uh, so the fire burns. She's quieted for even longer this time. Her hands suddenly can come to her face is in that um, position of deep concentration. And then the log explodes. Oh! And uh, she goes, oh. Now that's very interesting. Fix has got like his weapon half out. Just as like a reactionary You're not sort of thing. That fire correctly. What are you doing? Well, th thank you. I was pretty sure I put too many logs on here. Um, yes, I was expecting an exploding dangerous. log. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your advice. I, I shall take it under advisement. Thank you. And the old lady turns and looks at you and says, as she leans in really close, Granny says, "There is much danger in your future." I have two things to tell you. Okay. One. You will hold the bones of one that you love. And you will weep. Oh. And the second. A sunbeam will free you. Is, um, okay. And one particular sunbeam? Or... Every morning, sunbeam. When she I do smiles, my, just holds up her hand, says, "Sun salutations." Well, I suppose you'll have to find out, dearie, won't you? Okay, so bones and sunbeam. Thank you. And as you rise, she reaches out and grabs your wrist. Oh, oh. <laughs> and inside, she passes you something. And says, "Take this." I think you need it more than me. And she passes you a turquoise stone on a leather bracelet. Um, I, I cannot take this, Granny. This is too precious. Don't be silly, dear. Just a little gift from an old lady. Everyone needs a gift from their granny. Oh, okay, um, 
I was initially grateful. Now I'm a little apprehensive. But um, but thank you. Can I give you something in return? You've already given me your company, dear. That's quite enough. If you really want something, you can bring me a nice strong cider. That I can do. And he and rises to go and get the cider. Rise. Yes, marvellous. And I shall um, give her a little bow. She nods and pulls her shawl close. What would anyone else like to do now you are all in the same space? Octavius moves over, checks the fire, gives the old woman a look, and then moves back to where he was and sits down on the log. <laughs> um, uh, excuse me, sir. Um, uh, you seem fairly knowledgeable in the, in the way of fires. Could you tell me why that log might have exploded? Oh, there's probably a rotten log trapped gas that is sort of thing it's generally try to throw on fresh wood that's dried not necessarily rotted pieces of wood okay yeah 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 rotten Thank wood you. yeah that's what i was going to say yeah 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 definitely <laughs> definitely and there i was with one boot off and the other one was getting thrown at me from halfway across from this huge goliath come on old man if that don't make you laugh i don't know what else will Roll a performance check for me, please, Ripper. <laughs> uh, that is a dirty 20. <laughs> With this, he tries not to laugh, but you just see the corner of his, the twitch in the corner of his mouth. I knew it. Goes... I, I knew that one would get you. And you know why? Because men like you, salt of the earth, down in the mountains, right? You guys know. You guys know those big races. You guys know those big guys. And how hard they work. And I knew that that's the one that you would you would find most funniest. So, cheers, old man. I've got to admit, I didn't quite expect the uh, gnome and the piano in the middle of it. That was brilliant. <laughs> but that, you see, this is, what I, this is what I'm saying. And this is what I'm saying about your son. If I had been trapped here, if I had not given the chance to go out and explore and, you know, to go and take my oath like I'm going to do now and be a bird and spread my wings and fly, I never would have been able to create a story like that. Oh. What oath? Well, see, I'm a follower of Luria, right? And my thing is that I need to... I'm, I'm going to pledge my life. I'm going to pledge my fealty to spread the word. Do you know what it is, old man, right? I just love life, right? No matter how it comes, no matter how it is, just love life. And it's important to spread that message to as many people as possible. So I'm going to make it my sacred duty to make sure that life is preserved... And anyone who tries to hurt people, chain people up, anything like that, guess what's coming to him? Get swift vengeance from the goddess Illyria. Right. Well, that's... Uh... He kind of lifts a glass and doffs his head and goes, Fair play to you, I'm just going to keep getting ore out of the river. But uh, if that's what you want to do, mate, well, fair play. Can't say you didn't tell a good joke, at least. Without you taking ore out of the river, you wouldn't allow more and more fish to be able to swim through and create more life for more people to fish. So I really do thank you for what you do. And you had this genuinely quite touching moment. Um, Fazer, we come back to you by the fire as finally poor Celia is out of stories. And uh, she goes, right, children, that's enough. Off you go. And the various children scatter back to their parents in the crowd, all rustling hot baked potatoes that have been cooked in the bonfire. And she turns and says, Well, I, I'm sorry we've not had a formal introduction. My name's Celia. I'm the town's presidious. It's a little like uh, town mayor. I see you're, a, you're an outlander. What can I do to help you? Oh, well, um, my name's Fazer. Thank you, Celia, for the stories. Honestly, they, they, they were, they were marvellous. Um, but I, I'm looking for someone, and I've been looking for them for a very, very long time. Um, and to be honest, I, I don't know where else to go anymore. I wonder if you might have seen him. Um, he, he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a human, um, and uh, his name is My Centre. Um, and I, I, he's, a, he's a tinker, a, tra a travelling tinker. And I, 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 he, he raised me. And one day he disappeared. And that was about... 10 years ago and I have not been able to find him since and I wondered if perhaps you had seen another travelling tinker come through well you'll forgive me for not knowing all of their names tinkers 
travel around quite regularly to the Hamulet does good work here. Um, there was one band uh, that came through a year or so back. They had a few elderly gentlemen with them. Uh, the last I knew they were headed to Cinderbane, uh, which is a city to the west. Oh, gosh, you might I really, ask there. I really don't like cities. Okay, um, well, thank you very much for your help. Oh, gosh, cities. Blimey. All right. Thank you very much. I I, I don't nice want to waste any more of your time. Uh, uh, thank you. And and in, if you if you want me to 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 fix anything or or to to make anything while I'm here, um, please just let me know. Uh, I, I make these lovely little. Uh, I mean, I, I make useful things, um, but my favourite things are, are little entertaining toys. And next time, if you ever have any children that, that that want lots of stories, and and you 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 must be busy, then then maybe they could play with those. Um, but, but just let me know. Anything. Anything at all. Very happy. Very happy to help. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Phaser. Um, if you would like to make things, of course, feel free. If you must excuse me, I, I need to go and attend to the festivities. We're nearly at the time for the festival itself. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll sit here and I, I will wait for the festival. Or is this the best place to sit? Where, where, where do I go? Where, oh, I, yeah. I've got to get the best view. It's a marvellous view here. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll wait just here. Just, just, just here. Here. Okay. Thank you. I shall see you soon. And she walks up. We cut again to the dance as a slightly awkward dance has turned into a far more confident dance. Uh, in fact, a few dances have passed, and this strong uh, blacksmith has started laughing in her dancing with you and saying, "My, you're a good partner there. Having a good time. Have you been enjoying yourself? Oh, sorry, I didn't catch your name." Oh, um, my name is Seed, and I'm a bard, human bard. Oh, hello, Seed. My name's Jenea. I'm a, uh, blacksmith, obviously. I'm a fawn, as you can tell. You look down and you notice for the first time what you thought were wonderfully embroidered trousers turn out to be, um, well-furred legs that have got beads woven through them and cloven hooves at their base. And she says, yeah, it's been just such a pleasure. So, uh, what brings you to these parts from the frozen north, then? Oh, um... It's kind of a long story. I'd rather not go into it right now. But it's totally normal, nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, right, well, that's probably understandable. I don't mean to pry. Um... Right, if you're done with the dancing, would you like a drink? I can introduce you to my wife. Oh, um... Absolutely, yes. I, I enjoy to drink things, yes. And so, uh, Janae leads you down the dance floor, across the uh, muddy grass, to the bar, which is our table with drinks, and uh, she waits as she brings over a gorgeous um, sort of tabby tabaxi lady who uh, she casually puts an arm on and they give a sweet little kiss to each other. And she says, Elaine, Elaine, got me to see, wonderful dancer. Hello, my name is Seed. Hello, the pleasure is mine. It is lovely to meet you. It's lovely to meet you too. At which point you notice a uh, large quite burly man who unbelievably in the chill of the autumn air is completely bare chested next to you and um, accidentally nudge his drink oh my goodness I'm so sorry I believe that was your beverage ah that's alright don't worry about it you know like drink spill you know things happen I'm sure I can get another one wow your hair is it is so silver Oh, um, thank you. I grew it myself. Is it like, is it like silver, like metal silver? Or is that like some kind of magic or something? No, no. Organic. Completely normal human hair. <laughs> wow. Excuse me, does anyone have any cider here? Uh, yeah, basically you just want the, uh, you want the crushed apple juice that's been fermented, basically. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm aware of what cider is. I was just wondering where I could get a cup of it for Granny. I speak to the barman, mate, I think. Uh, I mean, he, he does a lovely jug of ale, though. I can promise you that. Very, uh, very light to the tongue. Thank you very much. 
Um, okay, nice meeting you both. Dicksmith is is with Octavius, I think, and sort of he's going. You just sort of hear a bit of uh, uh, him sort of. He's talked for quite a significant amount of time about logs of wood, as if he knows about them. So he's sort of going, yeah, yeah, you know. It's not that you can't use the rotten logs of wood. You have to insert them underneath the normal logs of wood. It's, 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 I don't need to go into it anymore unless you'd like me to keep talking about it. No, no, no. Can we just uh, make a contested intelligence roll from you, Six Myth, <laughs> versus um, perception you can indeed. from, from perception. Octavius? Intelligence. Perception. An insight story. Insight, okay. From Octavius. So I, I'm rolling my intelligence, basically. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> it's like Eleven for me. Yeah. Okay, so it's not that Six Myth is talking total nonsense. It's mostly accurate. It's just that it's nothing you haven't heard before. There are a few things that aren't wouldn't measure up to uh, the code of your legion, but different people from different places do things differently. It's an unusual way of doing it, but sure. It's something that I might try myself in the future. Thank you. I notice you've, uh, you have the build and stature of, uh, if I may be so bold, of a man from, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to stay the army. That's contentious to talk would, about in certain places. No, 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 you would be absolutely correct. If we ah. were talking yesterday, I would be a member of the army indeed. Oh, you have retired with honours, I imagine, or...? Not retired as such. Left. Um, through proper channels, of course. Um, oh, of course, no of course. My, of myself, too. Oh. Are you talking about the army here? Yes, yes. This country. I am Chinan, born and bred. Ah. Um, I don't... I've never... I've been in Nürnberg maybe a few times, but generally I've never left this country. Ah, you have the strong features of a Chinellan. Very bold, very strong. I, I love it. Uh, thank you. Um, you must hail from Indiri yourself. Ah, yes, yes. So I'm told. It's a very distinct, it's a very distinct accent. Ah, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, some people, uh, they say they could listen to me talk for hours and hours. I can um, <laughs> some people do, you hear from the other side of the camp. <laughs> He's just. That's my brother, Lack. Uh, you talked to him earlier on. Uh, oh, I see. I we see. Uh, we're just uh, uh, traveling through your land, um, but I would like to know a little bit more about uh, uh, your choices for leaving the armed services. I myself, as you can see, uh, proudly am sporting the outfit of uh, of a small company uh, offshoot of the Interior Army. I see. Well, I was not very high. I was just a scout. Um, generally doing observation work and planning. Um, I have uh, a few talents that make it much easier for myself to be in hostile territory without being seen. Um, ah, and to see yes. others as well. But um, let's just say family issues meant that I could no longer be in the army. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I understand. Uh, my brother and I, we were both in two different disciplines until very recently. And uh, I hope you don't mind me being open with you, but a month ago, our mother died and we had to leave our professions. I'm, I'm on an extended my leave of absence. Oh, thank you. That's uh, very kind of you. Um, she worked her way around uh, the world as we know it. Um, and so the story she told us, we are weaving a path back through her life in reverse, um, seeing where it takes us. You know, in, in life, you would never have the time to indulge in somebody else's passions. But in death, sometimes you are more thoughtful about it. And it gives you pause and time maybe to, to do so. I think... So about um, logs. Oh, no, sorry. Go on. Go on. I was, I was about to say, well, I think... Today is probably the first time in my entire life that I get to follow that sort of path. Ah, my friend. I, do you drink? Are you a drinker? 
and not. Yes. Very suspicious way you answered that question, but um, I myself, I only drink when I'm enjoying myself. If I'm having a bad time, I, I never touch the stuff. But if you would come and have a drink with me, I uh, would be much obliged. I move over with him to the drinks. And we go over and try and grab the Rip. bartender. Ripper passes a, uh, uh, a mug of cider to the, to the man in the robes and then another glass of the bard and drinks one for himself. As he's passing the cider over, says, uh, uh, so that colour that you're wearing, is it like saffron or something? Saffron, like, that's right, yes. Yes, that's a very good spot. My well, my, see, my, my dad, my dad was from Indiri, and so he, you know, would tell me stories about some people in, you know, in your order and the things you do. Um, well, you've heard you about us. distinctive colours. That's right, we dye our own robes oh. when we are teenagers, and uh, we learn to do this. And uh, it becomes part of who we are, you know? You make your own clothes, you, you remember where you come from. I mean, that's Me why I don't wear any clothes, you know? Well, <laughs> I, I have noticed, um, but with a body like that, I don't think you need to. It's, um, oh, it's quite a sight much. to behold, and I am beholding it. Um, <laughs> I also really like your cloak. It's a very, very lovely colour. Well, Colours. It's much in the same way that you you know dye your own clothes for, to make it like who you are as a person you know i see all these cloaks you know they're dark they're green they're for hunters they're for you know they're for hunters right that's what they're there they're there mm -hmm. to hide them in the grass that is the total opposite of what i want i want everyone to know i am so this thing basically shines like a light i like it i like it it matches your eyes Thank you very much. And listen, like, no offense, no offense, but I know you got a dark cloak with the with the with the fur on it and everything like that. Like, I didn't mean nothing about it, you know. I'm just saying that it's it's just it's just not for me, you know. It's just not for me. But it does suit you very well, especially your hair. Um, I did notice your dancing. Um, your very quick study, lovely flow of um, of the body there. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind. Yeah, you picked up the dance moves very fast. Yeah. You, oh, you, you knew exactly what you were doing. Sixsmith oh. is quite the dancer, you know. He oh, really I'm is. Oh, he won't. Really he'll pretend he's not. But mother used to teach army. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you two could have a dance later if there's a big jig. Oh, I he would be my honour. It yeah, would yeah. be my honour. Yeah. I've just got to take this to Granny. Um, I've got to take this away. Um, having accepted the drink earlier from Ripper, uh, Sid would like to pretend to drink the drink, but is actually <laughs> going to be quietly pouring it, kind of surreptitiously, at whenever the conversation has moved kind of away from attention on them. Uh, so I, yes, I'm going to sneakily be trying to empty the tankard. Make me a deception check, please. Uh, everyone else who is still there, roll perception. That's a 15. I uh, only got a 12. I'm drinking away. Mm, damn. Okay, mm, so eight. no one notices. Except <laughs> Octavius. Do you choose to say anything? Um, I keep an eye on it. But no. So as far as you are aware, you are completely sneakily pouring it away. Great job, Seed. And... Uh, <laughs> At this time, Celia claps her hands together and the audience quietens down a little bit as she says, Gather, ladies and gents, gather. It is time for the festival. Please, come round the fire. And people start moving and finding a place around the fire itself. And they start all holding hands which is not something you've seen before. You can choose to join in or stand apart. Black will walk over to the young lady in the glasses and hold her hand. Baze and, is uh, very definitely up for holding hands. <laughs> yes! I saw, for this. I saw you on your own. Do you fancy taking part in a local tradition with me? Oh, so much so. Yes, please. Let's do it. Uh, okay. Black, by the way, nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Baza. Hi, what a wonderful name. Where's that Thank from? Uh, well, uh, the imagination of, of someone. Uh, I, I've 
I, I, I'm from... I don't know if I should say. You seem so friendly. I, I, I'm from Zawati. Oh, I'm yeah. from Indiri. We're oh, you've traveled practically neighbours, huh? Yeah. You've travelled further than I. Good gracious. <laughs> oh. well, you know, we're all travelling in one way or another. Come, let's go see what she has to say. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Ripper will join in and hold hands with people as well. Okay. Six Smith will probably try and find a, a maybe that old wo- the old woman or some sort of authority figure or someone who you know just to ask if what's going on and s- make sure that joining in or not joining in would be which would be the most respectful act to take. So you find Granny who is nearing the end of her third tankard of cider. I thought you were and... going to say nearing the end of her life. For some reason, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought. <laughs> 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 See Oof, how the rest of this festival old. goes. <laughs> and uh, she turns to you and says, Are you not joining in, dearie? Oh, I didn't want to offend anyone. Just wanted to make sure, you know, uh, uh, whether joining in was the right thing to do. Oh, you're more than welcome. There's no judgment here. May I ask what will happen once we all join hands? Well, she'll suck out your souls and you'll all die. <laughs> you're... I knew you were a good storyteller and you told good jokes. You're like the man over there with no shirt. Very, very funny. Everybody listen to him. Yes, Um, it's just a little festival, dear. There's nothing scary. It's just we celebrate the fact that the leaves have started to fall. We've got the harvest in. That's it. Oh, then I'd be more than happy to. Um, You haven't got another one of those jewels, have you, that you gave my brother? I can't have him having one and me not having one. (laughs) He's joking, obviously. (laughs) He's Uh, joking, but... Such brother behaviour. She's going to roll an insight check. Okay. She looks at you and uh, doesn't give you anything, but does reach out and just sort of pats you on the shoulder and she says, Stay with him. He's going to need you. And then she wanders off. Okay. Um... I, I suppose then I just would offer, I would offer my hand to Octavius. I, I assume it's a gesture of kindness, friendship in this area, and you know, um, yeah, I think I'd probably do that. Octavius, do you accept? I would offer. I offer. I think Six Smith offers his hand to Octavius to join into the circle, just as a friendly gesture. Yes, Octavius joins the circle, takes the hand. He's, he doesn't say anything. Just joins. Okay. So, as you're all stood around the circle, Seed, are you holding hands? Are you standing back? Uh, yeah, Seed goes right in as soon as they see that everyone else is doing this and it's just like, oh yes, the traditional hand holding, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you all hold hands, there starts to be this chant that goes round. The crowd and it's not off-putting so much they're gradually it sounds like they're singing a series of vowels over a 30 40 second period something a little like um and people are nodding at you encouragingly and uh kind of getting you to join in a bit it takes a bit of time we're getting there and this chant kind of rises and just gets louder and louder and louder and then it stops and as it stops you see celia actually climb up into the fire and stand atop the fire completely unburned hang on i wanted to hear seeds chant by the way just i don't know if it's just me that wanted to know what oh no you're not alone human bard chant (laughs) I mean, like probably her. something along the lines of, yeah, like. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's nice. Good. <gasps> my bird spirit appears on my shoulder as this ha- as this is all happening. As a small okay. fire bird. As this uh, small fire bird appears on your shoulder, flames spreading off it, they seem to echo the flames of the bonfire. We're not talking a roaring bonfire here. It's a village green bonfire. It's. A little dangerous i'm not sure it would pass health and safety standards here but in chanella it's absolutely fine and she climbs to the top and the flames are wreathing around her and seemingly not touching her as she says 
Ladies and gents and all others, I bid you hail and welcome to the Festival of Falling Leaves. It's this time of year we give thanks and celebrate the long, hot time we've had, and we prepare for the coming dark. And as you turn and you see behind her, she sort of stood against the woods so that the darkened trees are there just lit up. The orange glows of the fire reflecting the ruddy browns and the crackling yellows of the dying leaves. And there's almost a Stardew Valley-esque moment where the leaves all start falling <laughs> simultaneously. And it, it almost literally like someone just flipped a switch. Not quite a flump falling down, but they just start falling like snowflakes. And then they start swirling. And they're coalescing and you hear the ooh ah from the crowd and then they're swirling faster and faster and faster oh, and can you amazing. All make me a perception check please can i cast tech magic please you certainly can are you doing that publicly um well i have to it's verbal and semantic so well i mean are you trying to hide it with a sleight of hand uh, yeah because i'm casting it. i'm not ritual casting it okay so you can make me a slice of hand check to... Can I can I give it to him at disadvantage by saying at the same time, you know, I, I wonder if this is because of the type of logs they used. You know, like I'm just trying... <laughs> Octavius is trained to block out. <laughs> yeah, I would say he is trained to block out. What's his slice of hand? It's a 16. Okay, not that I would, not that I would intentionally check. give you a... The 18 uh, yeah. plus 6, 24. 24? I got 16. Oh, 19 plus 3, 22. 19 hey, is for Ripper. It, isn't this beautiful, huh? God, See, I have seen get, nothing sorry? like this on my travels. I've got a two. <laughs> yes, seed. Okay. Yes. So, everyone notices two things. Those standing near Octavius notice him casting a spell. Uh, Sixsmith, as you are closest, you see this gesture and these words come out that differ from the chant. Everyone else's eyes are at the trees. Um, Octavius, you you don't detect magic you detect something and uh, it's if detect magic allows you to taste the uh, the flavor of the magic being used let's say then the flavor you taste now is the bile left can after someone is sick it's not a specific <laughs> flavor it feels wrong can I use I my six... something's not right? Can Get I use ready. my divine sense, please? I instantly would put my hand on my weapon, well, ready myself. With everyone else's perception checks, because this is happening simultaneously. Before he can say that, what you sense or you see is behind, on the floor, out of the forest, seems to be almost like oil. This dark liquid, just dribbling and coalescing and then it joins up with some of the leaves and the leaves form almost like spinning whirlwinds hurricanes and that's where the screaming starts and we'll find out what happens after break we'll see you in just a moment Thank you. taking a small break everyone we'll see you back soon
And welcome back. Right, roll initiative, please. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> that's, a, that's a seven for me, Johnny. Oh, we're going to go around from top to bottom just to keep it a little bit quicker. So, okay. um, anyone got over 20? Uh, that's not good, is it? Marvellous. Uh, <laughs> between 15 and 20. 17, 17. 18. 18. Nice ripper. More. 19. So, 19. Oh, seed. Seed. That's a really squeaky chair I've got, everyone. It's not <laughs> anything else. If, uh, uh, OK. 
Okay, uh, between 15 and 10. Interesting. Okay. Between 5 and 10. 7. 8. Uh, 7, so that's... Um... <laughs> oh, brother! <laughs> Not looking. <laughs> you know what mother used to say? Keep both eyes open or... Well, you won't see the log in the fire. That's right, that's right. Tavius <laughs> distracted him with his spell casting. Yeah. <laughs> I got four. Um, Thanks. Johnny, yeah. Um, would I know, just as a side while it's been calculated, would I know about the fire spirit? Would that be something that is unusual to me in this world? Or, w or would that um, just be more of a companion? You would certainly think it's an interesting pet at this point. Okay. Possibly uh, not anything more. So as you, uh, we have Octavius casting the spell and the others noting in the middle of the fact that this orc is just standing in a fire and then this black kind of ooze joins the leaves as two of these uh, piles of leaves coalesce into stronger forms that look like mini whirlwinds with some sort of strange dark figure inside them and they shoot out these leaves and the crowd just scatters and we you are stood well let's move you to exactly where you are on the battlefield so um we had Octavius was next to Six Smith. We had mm -hmm. Ripper uh, was by Seed, I believe. And uh, oh, luck! Your token has disappeared. Oh, he's gone stealth. <laughs> it's off the map. Left. It's off the map, just off the side. I, um, can, I see can put it. it. There it is. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, so you were, uh, I believe next to phaser holding right, hands yeah. yes mm -hmm. so if we can remember please folks i'm going to move your tokens tonight just to keep it easier and descriptive um is there anyone who feels like they're not where they are now well it's good to me i feel good yep marvelous uh the joys of digital instead of having <laughs> minis i miss minis so <laughs> as we start the round and these leaves fly out and you see a few of the villagers crying and running into the night you see the second of these strange leaf creatures do the exact same thing and all these leaves coalesce and seem to hit Celia on the fire and she rolls and slumps onto the floor. Uh, she seems injured in some way. And then Gosh. we come firstly to Seed. What would you like to do? Okay, so... I can't reach Celia in this turn, I don't think. So instead, um, I am going to raise my hands to cast, um, and I'm going to say to the kind of coalescing leaves that have now kind of swirled up around us, um, basically, uh, I don't know what you are, but let's at least see you a little better, and then cast Fairy Fire on the swirling piles of leaves. Marvellous. Okay. So, um, in terms of what they need to do, uh, it's a dexterity saving throw. Okay. What's the uh, DC? It's 14. 14, thank you. Uh, so, as you cast this, this fairy fire kind of hits one of these forms, and for a moment it seems to move out of it, and then your fire moves with it. And we see inside the leaf a humanoid looking figure with out any legs. It's sort of almost a bit like a genie where it tails off, but the tailing off seems to be dripping black oil. And the eyes, if the figure is dark, the eyes are even darker. You'd almost say it's an absence of eyes marks where the eyes are. Um, and its hair is long and bedraggled and moving around. Okay, uh, then as a bonus action, uh, I would like to give some bardic inspiration. Um, and I will do that to uh, the lovely gentleman who bought me a drink. Seems fair exchange. Uh, so the way I give inspiration is I take out my drum um, and I begin to beat. And it, at first it's kind of, it feels like I've found the rhythm of your heartbeat 
and then I'm getting a bit faster and a bit faster and a bit faster and then you're just feeling like yeah I'm pumped up I'm ready to go I'm feeling inspired so yeah have some bardic inspiration yeah uh what is that that I'm rolling what inspiration I like it and uh, you get so... an extra d6 uh yeah it's 1d6 lovely okay good oh I'm feeling this Would yeah you like come to on move at all seed uh no I'm gonna stay where I am Ripper, it is your turn then. All right, so feeling this like war drum, he's like, yeah, yeah, I love this, yeah. And he like, what looks like an innocuous, uh, like big branch on the ground, he like kicks the end of it and flips up and it catches it and he realizes it's, it's his fighting stick. And he goes, come on then, let's dance. And runs head on into these leaves that are attacking the people. Okay, would you like to head the ones to your southeast or to the southwest? I'd probably head to the ones closest to me, so that's going to be southeast. Okay. So that uses 15 feet of movement to get there. Lovely, and then I am going to... I'm going to use use this big stick of mine and, uh, and run an attack. Does a 18 hit? It certainly does. Lovely. So he's using it, so he runs up two-handed hits it through that is going to be one that is going to be five points of bludgeoning damage that's okay and then as a bonus action because he's very adept with his with his stick he's gonna try and hit it uh, uh, with the other side of it that is going to be a 16 to hit that hits lovely and it's then gonna take an extra two points of damage as he goes oh two for a pound two for a pound and then hits it the other half of the stick marvelous so you run in and uh twirling <laughs> this branch with uh, an adept grace that almost makes it looks dexterous but it's a very muscly dextrosity it's a word now dextrosity word now. you uh twirl it and you do hit and as the, you impact you feel like you're hitting leaves. It doesn't seem to hit the creature um, in a the way you'd expect of a kind of flesh creature. You definitely feel its impact, though. And then on instinct, you spin and you hit it with the other side. And again, you feel it impact. It's just the texture feels very odd to you. Is there anything else you'd like to do? You've got a little bit of movement left. No, I stand my ground. Okay, marvellous. Lack, it is your turn. The lax inspired by this whirlwind movement and uh, taking the moment of the flow, he spins low, put round phaser, um, and he reaches over his shoulder to grab this big bamboo pole, which has a pointed spear on the end. It bends as he swings it round, completing the whirlwind movement and tries to thwack the pile of leaves to his east, southeast. So I'll just step into that spot between Phaser and Ripper, if that's all right. Okay, jumping up onto the log onto itself. Onto the log, yeah. Um, okay, Ooh, 12 plus... Oh, 19 to hit. 19 hits. Yes, okay, so that will do eight points of damage, please, as he brings, as the as bamboo co cane comes around, he, he uses both hands and swicks across it. Okay, as he pulls it down again he hits and that damage goes on and you see the leaves kind of scatter for a moment and then coalesce back around this creature for a moment you can see lit against the uh, branching lights of the fire you can see the creature a little clearer and then the lights coalesce back okay. around, and the, the leaves sorry coalesce back around the moment that he sees that he he sort of an upward backwards kick with a heel to try and go to the face using my martial okay. arts but the leaves move in too quickly. I'm assuming a nine doesn't hit. It does. You do manage to kick out, but you do just kick air as the leaves swirl around. You're fine. And I will continue my movement. I'll, uh, I'll leap back and cover Phaser. So I'll stand just below um, whatever the name of the lady was. I can't remember the orc. Celia. 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 So I'll stand so south of there. that. Yeah. And I've okay. got mobile, so because I've attacked him, I he can't make an attack of opportunity. So I move too quick for him to lash out. 
absolutely brilliant. So firstly, as you do that, that's absolutely fine. It comes then to this first uh, leafling and it roars out in pain as it's slightly lit up. It's just been attacked by two creatures. It is going to move over to Ripper, who is the closest creature to it at this point. And the leaves swirl faster and faster until they seem to engulf Ripper. And Ripper, could you make me a dex save, please? Ooh, it's only a seven. So as these leaves surround you, you almost feel trapped. You can feel this presence in close around you, and you are now engulfed. So uh, until you manage to escape, you are blinded, and your movement is reduced to zero. Oh, leave it alone, mate. Oh, God. What's the opposite <laughs> of inspiration? <laughs> that. Um, Does that inspiration, is it? The opposite. Oh. Uh, no, it's fine. And <laughs> then the uh, other coalescing leaves move across and get close as they move towards Lack. Then they see him move into the space. They fire off another round of leaves towards him to try and catch him as he dodges into that area. So Rod. they are going to roll an 11, which I assume misses. Oh, definitely misses. I'm and like a snake underneath. These leaves do just fly past and you see them as they catch in the ground. They almost just dissolve like uh, leaves torn and hitting the muds. They seem to have no strength whatsoever once they reach the ground. And that is going to be their turn. Octavius, it is your turn. And Phaser, you're on deck after that. I want to move 10 feet to my left. Yes. And then I will whisper a quiet word into my palm and reveal a small flame, which then I will send towards one of the, leaf the leafling to the south east. Okay, um, make an attack roll then. The produced flame, not fl not the other one. Okay. Which is a 18 to hit. It hits. Can't use that dice anymore. That's a six fire damage. Okay. So as the fire hits the leaves, you hear an almighty screech. Uh, in some sort of unholy pain as the, it seems to do a lot more damage than you thought it perhaps would. Interesting. It's weak to fire, I'll call out with my bonus action. Thank you kindly. And that will end my go. That, marvellous. Phaser, it is your turn. Um, uh, thanks, Octavius. Am <laughs> I going to uh, chuck a firebolt this time at the southwesterly uh, leafling, so that uh, as everybody else seems to be concentrating on the southeasterly one. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Cool. Um, may I please double check on the character sheet? Um, I've got the firebolt. Hit slash DC is a plus five. Does that plus five go on to the, the D20, D20 I'm about to roll? Yes. Great, thank you. Oh, lovely. 20. Three, uh, 22. That hits. Yeah. And then I roll at 1d10, which is that one. Oh, they're all so new. First time rolling a d10, everybody, from the <laughs> dice set. I'm just throwing it out there. That is an 8 fire Congrats. damage. Congrats. Marvellous. A very good roll. Thanks very as much. Your, uh, as you sort of appears, again, rushing past you, and you duck down, and between his legs just send out this bolt of flame that shoots <laughs> through the Oh, gosh. Just scorches this uh, creature and again you hear the unholy scream as it starts to fizzle and sizzle. Is there anything else you would like to do? Um, at this point uh, I think I'm just going to move between the leafling and Celia. Oh. Uh, sorry, this, the one I've attacked and Celia, so uh, what's that? 10 feet to my right to the west. So you can move to here onto the edge okay um, you technically can't occupy the same space as another creature 
Oh no, I meant like between her and the leafling. So if you if I went one like five foot down, then you would be in this... the leafling space. Oh, sorry, on my phone. You might need to refresh the map. Oh, 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 sorry, because all the token, all the other tokens are moving. Sorry. That's okay. Refresh <laughs> that then. Then I'm 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 probably going to stay where I was then if that's okay. all right. No oh, look, there all. they are. Lovely. Thank you very much. No problems. Always that's worth me. just refreshing just before your turn, folks. Um, just because to keep Foundry nice and smooth. Uh, so that brings us to Six Myth, and then we're back to Seed after that. Can I? I'd like to see if the old crone is around. I've, I, you didn't describe her as a crone, but I've decided she's cronish. <laughs> so is right. the old crone around somewhere? The Actually, yeah, matronly old grandmother. <laughs> yes, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just your accent and your voice that made her sound cronely. Um, uh, yes, the matronly lovely, yeah, old auntie. Cronely, is that how old people are feeling because of coronavirus? <laughs> that's, 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 that's worse as bad than as leaf You need to de-inspire yourself as well. The next attack will have disadvantage. Um, <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, she will make a perception check. I'll let you do okay. that as a free action. Oh, thank you. Ah, not great roll today. 11. Can't see her anywhere, but then there's a lot of people just running around screaming. Hmm. Uh, okay. Um, I think that I'll close the gap between... Each square's five uh, yes. feet, right? Um, I think... And everybody's attacking the chap to the the east. Yes. I'm, in, I'm engulfed by him. Focus fire. I, I, I know. I know what I'm doing. I know. What, uh, Six Smith knows about the battlefield. Focus fire. Um, so I think I make a beeline. Maybe I can move um, to the east of Ripper. Does that make sense? So I'm like next to Ripper, and yes, I'm at, in, in attacking range. Yep, yeah, perfect. So I I'll attack the one on the southeast with my scimitar. Um, it. He runs like a samurai with his hand on it since um, Octavius would have told him to get ready his weapon, but all he managed to do was get it partway out of the sheath before all this went down. So he runs like a samurai with it and does a swift pull it out and swipe at the same time. Um, and I'm going to roll it with a d20 and then add my modifier because D&D uh, Beyond likes to sometimes roll all of it and I like to only roll the damage if I know I've hit, otherwise I feel bad. So to hit, it's 17 plus 6. You hit. Ooh. Nice roll. Thank you. Go with the virtual dice. <laughs> and that is 11. I did 11 points of damage. Okay, so 11 points of slashing damage. Yeah. As you uh, slash into these leaves, you feel that your sword doesn't quite have the purchase it should do on this. Um, again, you're used to hitting living creatures that are mm -hmm. tangibly flesh and the sort of ethereal nature of whatever this thing is slashing doesn't seem as effective against it you so definitely bonus... do damage right okay but it's just not quite as effective okay i think i'll as a bonus i'll yell to lack and i'll say um uh you know what mother used to say about gems from strange women and i'll just leave it with a sort of a sort of vague uh thing because i don't six smith probably thinks this it, that gem was either a burden or a or or, a, or or the opposite of a burden and who knows at this point what part it has to play who knows? Um, I know. and he's jealous he didn't get one um and that's my <laughs> that's my turn <laughs> that's six smith's turnover fantastic so seed we're back to the top of the order okay so at this point can i see is ripper still thoroughly engulfed Yes. Is that the case? Okay. So, um, Seed is not keen on shooting an arrow and potentially hitting a friend. So, uh, uh, instead. But can I just say that Six Myth was fine slashing away at it, though? So, <laughs> he doesn't know you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, instead, uh, they're going to cast Vicious Mockery. Um, and what they do is they kind of. They sort of like whisper something into their hands and then blow it like a kiss and the words kind of like shoot out to kind of like try and hit the creature and uh, what they say is I know he's wearing a very nice cloak but there's really no need to eat him <laughs> Marvellous um, Vicious Mockery, is that crawl or DC save? Uh, so it is uh... hmm. Good question 
Top of my head, I think it's an attack. Oh, it's, it's wisdom. Kind of Sorry, it's a wisdom. Wisdom save. save. Sorry, I was trying to find the right. Uh, okay, what's you your know, stats? Uh, wisdom save. What's your DC? Uh, fourteen. Okay, so these words, as you blow them into the wind, it's almost like they are scattered into the winds. As whatever this creature is doesn't seem that bothered by it. Okay. Anything else you would like to do? Uh. No, I'm going to leave it there, and I'm not going to move in. Going to okay. leave it there. Oh. <laughs> so, Ripper, it is That's your enough. turn. That's you enough. are engulfed, so you can attempt to make a strength check to escape. You, If you're attacking, although you are blinded, this creature is fairy-fired, so if you attack, it's still with a straight roll, because something I forgot till just this second, first dream already making mistakes, <laughs> is that because it's been fairy-fired, all, all melee attacks against it have um, advantage. So, my question is this. Can my feet touch the floor? Yes. Can I use my movement and my action as a dash action to pull, to walk towards the fire and try and flop all these leaves on it? Yeah, or at least maybe just, I don't know, make it susceptible. So your movement is currently reduced to zero because of it's essentially flapping around you in a sense that uh, it would be not panicking you, but causing you to kind of lose your orientation. Okay, fine. Well, I guess for that case, then I'll, I will have to break free. You can still, so you can still attack. It'll actually be a straight roll thanks to the fairy fire. Um, but if you want complete freedom of movement, then you would have to escape first. Nah, I don't need complete free movement. I'm just going to swing swing my stick. I mean, I'm basically face to face with whatever thing is inside of this thing, right? So Absolutely. I'm just going to take a swing at it. A dirty 20 to hit. Hits. Lovely. Uh, five, six, seven, eight points of damage. And then I'm going to two for a pan, two for a pan. No, we're on my other one, so drop that one on the floor. Oh, that's a, a 21 to hit. Hits. Two for a pand, two for a pand. That is an additional seven points of damage. Marvellous. Uh, so, an excellent round. Well done, Ripper. As right. you, again, swirl, despite the fact these things are swirling around you, it becomes a beautiful uh, scene as you're just laying into this dark, mysterious form inside sort of billowed out a bit like a sphere around you essentially and within it you're having like an epic gandalf moments of that kind of just one-on-one -on -one confrontation and then we move to lack okay so would it be possible to roll around this leaf thing over celia's body to reach into the fire and grab a stick and smack it with the flaming stick. Absolutely it would. Uh, I will say that is an improvised weapon. Mm -hmm. It will be a 1d4 bludgeoning. Mm -hmm. And then the fire... Mm, I'm going to say it's a 1d4 on top of that. So essentially okay. it's 2d4. 2d4, okay. But unless you have uh, proficiency with improvised weapons, you won't get oh, any bonuses to damage. Do monks have proficiency with that? Probably not. It feels like it'd be a club. Do you know what I mean? Like he'd he'd wield it as a club, or like. It does, but aside from the fine balancing of the club, it it would be an improvised. Fair play. It's all good. It's stuff. all good. I'm just gonna. Mm, okay. Can I do something more weird and really Go painful? Yeah. Can I dip both of my hand wrappings into the fire, set them on fire, and then leap at the leaves? <laughs> you <Yes>. absolutely can. <laughs> Little brother moves. I'll do, I'll do that instead. <laughs> Um, so I've got, I haven't got advantage on this one, have I? Because it's no. the other one. Okay, fine. Well, let's just give it a go, shall we? Flame on! <laughs> uh, 14 plus 7, 21. Hits. So that's, it's still only, there's 2d4, isn't it? 1d4 for the flames, 1d4 for my fists. Yeah, it's your normal fist damage. Plus okay, that is plus 5, okay. Yeah. So, 1... And three, four, plus five, nine points of damage, of which three of those are fire. Okay, uh, so so as the first fist lays in, 
Again, the bludgeoning damage seems to hit it and do a little bit more damage than mm-hmm. the piercing seemed to. But the flame around it, some of these leaves just burn and we hear that piercing scream again. Okay, well, I'll follow that up with the other fist then, won't I? 11 plus 7, 18 to hit. That hits. Uh, four, nine points of bludgeoning damage. That was loud. And two points of fire damage. Okay, and again, that piercing scream as this quick one-two comes in on this mm-hmm. figure. Can you just uh, roll a d4 for me as well again? Yeah, take that damage. Two! Take two points of fire damage no to yourself worries. as no this incredibly brave thing, which I am going to give you inspiration for, by the way. Thank you. Um, it looks really cool, but oh, it looks amazing. hurting. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to like play it off, but it's, yeah, it's like hurting a bit. But I just like do some cool monk stuff. No, I make it cool monk like, shit like fire poi. I'm like like undoing the bandages and doing fire <laughs> yeah. poi with it for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Um, is that your turn? Yeah. So uh, can I end up back over um, the orc lady, please, so that I'm kind of protecting her, even though I'm on fire. Uh, as she is prone, I'm going to say you can occupy the same space. Mm-hmm. Um, it technically gives you um, difficult terrain. Okay, no worries. I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to protect her from the leaves. That's fine. Uh, in that case, the first leaf creature, which is currently engulfing Ripper, is going to make an attack against him. And with a natural 20, will definitely hit. Um... Youch! Just checking something. Okay. Can't hear you, man. So You're muted. You're muted. For the benefit of the viewers, do you want to tell us how we're doing crits? Yes. So the way I like to homebrew crits is... Um, hurt us really badly. <laughs> let you hurt the enemies really badly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. essentially <laughs> the we get full damage on all dice. And then re-roll all dice. <laughs> add the two together and modifiers at the end. Which for people who used to 5e will go, nice. For anyone who doesn't understand that stuff yet, they'll be going, what? All you need to know is that Johnny's smile meant that this guy obviously rolls a lot of dice. Mm. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. So as... um, Be grateful it's level one. Uh, As uh, this creature just sends more of these leaves, as they're engulfing you, they seem to hit into your unprotected belly. And where you'd seen some of the ones earlier just uh, hit the ground and disintegrate, these stick in like shards of glass. Uh, and they do 11 points of piercing damage. So we've been playing like we've been playing playing characters that are like high level obviously in other games and I just thought oh you know it's not that bad is it looked over at my HP (laughs) 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 like yeah okay 11's bad that was a crit though to be fair mm-hmm. it was a crit um and it rolled incredibly well on the roll as well um not perfectly sadly uh then it's the turn of the second leaf uh the leafling sees lack attacking it and it doesn't like it it is going to attempt to engulf him being an unintelligent creature <laughs> and i'm on uh, fire I'm going to ask you to make a dex save, which will okay. even the point for a monk, but maybe. <laughs> I could roll low, and I probably will now. Um, Yeah, so that's... Oh, I thought that was a natural one. It's not. It's a seven. So uh, seven plus seven, that's 14. Okay, so you just save. And these leaves attempt to go round you, but somehow you manage to dodge back and forward again and they don't manage to grab hold octavius it is your turn do i see through the creature how injured um... make me a perception check as a free action um, that's a three but plus plus six oh, it's not enough it's nine no yeah i'd say for a nine you can okay, cool. see that at least you hear a very manly scream as lots of as you kind of see these sharp these leaves just hit ripper i would then like to cast healing word 
No. Um, which is a D4 healing plus four. You heal six hit points, Griffo. Oh. Uh, so I think Ripper doesn't know he's getting healed, and I think he just he just flexes, and it just happens to flex at the <laughs> at the right time that the leaves he the healing spell him. comes in, and if you the leaves ping off, so he goes. Glad I did those four hundred crunches this morning. <sighs> I would expect no less. Anything else you'd like to do, Octavius? Uh, yes, I would then like to move to the um, right side of the right. Swirl. Directly in range or it's ten foot out? Range. Yeah. Okay, so you can get to there. And then I would like to attack with my spear. Okay, take me an attack roll, please. Oh no, scimitar, sorry. Scimitar, not a spear. That's fine. Uh, which is. Uh, you have advantage on this, by the way, because it oh, is. Thank you. Um, which is a 23. That hits. Which is now five damage of slashing. So again, as you slash in, uh, you would have seen Six Smith attack earlier, but you wouldn't have necessarily felt what he felt. Now you feel the same thing. The the way that the slashing damage doesn't seem to hurt it as much as you would have hoped. Anything else you would like to do? Um, no, that's me done for the day. And then we uh, move to Phaser. Hello. Um, I would like to... Um, I'd like to cast Cure Wounds onto Lack, as he's had a bit of damage very quickly. That's okay. all right with you guys. <laughs> I mean, um, thank you, it's very kind. I do, need to, I do need to touch, but he's very close, so that's all right. Yeah, we it? were holding hands only a second ago. Oh, that's true, that's don't true. Don't hold my Maybe flaming hands hold, right now. I don't want to hold the fire. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so uh, do, do, I, do I roll a d20 to see if that works, or do I just... No, because you are reaching out and touching him. You just roll how much healing you would like Brilliant. to give. It's a 1d8 plus 3, so uh, well, it's 8. Brilliant. Eight plus wow. three, so I give you eleven. Well, lovely. Um, Thank you so much. That's all right. Um, and what else can I do? Golly, that's exciting. I didn't expect that to work so well. Um, I can do two weapon fighting, but I haven't really pulled out any weapons yet. I've just got the fire. So two weapon so... fighting generally only works when you've made an attack already with the main action. Right, okay. Well, that's the only bonus section I have, so I'm going to leave it at that. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, young lady. You're welcome. <laughs> A wise move. Six Smith, it is your turn. You're, You're muted, muted brother. Just how I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, the like same way you get phones that are like waterproof, obviously, drop it in the ocean. Water resistant, like it can take a bit of rain. I feel like I've got fire resistant boots. Not fireproof boots. If I put my, my army boot in the fire, I'm going to burn, right? But if I just kick up a log, and then as it's flying up into the air, I get a hand axe on it and like use the momentum to throw a log, a flaming log at one of these things at the guy next to me. Um, I feel like, how would I be able to do that? And how possible is that? Anything is possible. <laughs> yeah, I said how. I said how possible. <laughs> okay. If you would like to do that, then it will be an athletics check. Uh -huh. uh, followed by... Um, it's kind of cool. I'm going to say an attack roll to see if you can guide the axe okay. to hit it perfectly. So an athletics check to kick it up. Oh, this could go so brilliantly or so horribly wrong. Natural 20 plus 4. I'm not like... Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So I with a 24... Have I got my Beyond Link to Foundry? Because uh, there is uh, no crit hits or fails on ability checks. Mm -hmm. You managed to flick up the log perfectly and then let's see if the second bit works make an attack roll okay so that's a d20 my attack modifier where can i find my attack modifier it will at this point it will just be your strength bonus plus your proficiency uh so that probably my dex right just be right next to the hand if you've got your hand axe it'll be right next to that the plus the hit dc is oh so 17 plus 6 
So with a 23, you manage to somehow uh, almost snooker these, this uh, log <laughs> as it then flies, spinning, burning in the air, kind of like a poi and like uh, a but really... Cooler terrifying sparkler. Because he already did poi. <laughs> yeah. terrifying, sparkler. Already did. <laughs> terrifying sparkler of death. And <laughs> like a, is it a Roman that candle? Like. The ones that's... No, Catherine Wheel. Catherine, Catherine Wheel. Wheels. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or terrifying candle of death. And <laughs> as it spins through the air and strikes... Which one were you aiming at, sorry? Probably the one that's near Ripper and Octavius, the one that I've already had a, had a hand in. Okay, so the one rip is still inside. So oh, <laughs> hold on, I'm glad you reminded me of that. It's just because Foundry just you know it just doesn't show you, does it? So I'm just. Oh. Able, you, know. you called it. It's happening. <laughs> I'm just. Oh. Able, you, know. you called it. It's happening. Uh, yes. And um, so, um, can you please roll a d6? Uh huh. And add your. Um, Attack modifier. I can. So be your strength. Should boss. I though? Uh, a strength. I just use. Oh yeah. Okay. So that'll be four. So it's six plus four. Okay. So, so ten. Yep. Yeah. So ten. And then can you roll a d four? I'd rather not. If that's all right. Can it's I just not? Straight, it's just a straight d four. You've done it now. It's so cool. It's three. I hope I'm gonna kill Ryan. <laughs> three. So um, this log flies through uh it does mostly hit the leaves so the leaves are going to certainly uh fizzle and take that fire damage uh -huh. and then rip it in the middle of this you suddenly feel a clunk in your side as a log just thwacks you in the skull and oh obviously... his brother's here his big brother's here <laughs> <laughs> can you take um did you say you rolled a five for the... I rolled, uh, yes, a five, or, uh, and then three on the last roll, yeah. Okay, so can you take two points of bludgeoning damage then, please? Okay, that's not too bad. Looks like he's branching out. <laughs> hey! That's, this is... That's go on, getting go involved. On. I'm not yeah, getting involved. I'm going to put my foot down on this too. <laughs> I tree what you did there. I tree oh. what you did there. Someone's missing Panto. <laughs> this, is terrible. this is terrible. Um... Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Okay, all right. So... We go home. We're done. You peaked. You um, peaked. That's your, ac that's can your I, action. Yeah, I think as a movement, I'm going to try and move back, because I can still do that, can't I? Yeah, you plenty of movement. You can, So you can still move that. You were back to and there. And I don't know if this is even remotely sensible or not, um, but I have a healing hand. It, can I, I know it's constricted, but can I restore... Because... Yeah, you've I got to touch, restore? haven't you, with your healing hands? Yeah. So how would it work if he's constricted? If not, you would I'll have do to else. push your hands through the rapidly spinning leaves of death. Yeah. Now nah, you're on your own, mate. Sorry about the log. <laughs> um, I will. <laughs> if I go back to the fire, sorry. If I stay there and I just yell out to Octavius instead, um, something like, uh, "Use your parrot, your flaming parrot," and I, because I don't think I've seen anything, you know, necessarily quite like that. I assume it's some sort of parrot some sort of pirate appendage or something right so i'm trying it's to get him to use the it looks just like a, a like a small raven sort of bird okay yeah i think i'd probably still imagine it's a parrot so i'll go like eh, hey, use your fire parrot uh scout and try and give him some sort of uh, uh order is a strong word but some sort of you know idea okay. of using fire as uh, a bonus action and then that's that's my turn Okay, Seed, we are back to you, and Ripper, you're on deck after that. Okay, so having just heard uh, this shout go out of like, use your fire parrot, Seed is like, what is a fire parrot? This sounds great. And so gives Bardic inspiration to Octavius in order to see how that's gonna go. Um, so uh, again, Seed begins drumming, but this time it's kind of like the flutter of a bird's wing beats. And then it kind of gets a bit bigger and a bit bigger. So it's kind of trying to like, you know, inspire you to use the bird. Very keen on that. Uh, then, see, seeing that this isn't going very well with uh, the situation in, with Ripper in the leaves, uh, is going to just think, you know what, I'm going to try shooting an arrow. Uh, and I believe Fairy Fire still gives advantage. It does uh, still give advantage. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. All right, Let's there, Ripper. Well, it's lucky that it did. 
because uh, that's now 21. That hits. Cool. Uh, so, you go out dice. Yeah, it's like, to be fair, Ripper, nobody knows who you are, you know? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> this is like the uh, one shot all over again, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and that is 12 damage. 12 piercing damage as your arrow flies straight and true into this creature ripper you hear the arrow as it passes over your right shoulder and it passes through you hear it thunk in a tree and uh, there is definitely a moment where you sort of look at this creature and where the two lack of eyes Ah, oh, there now seems to be a third, completely hollow thing, and you can see the dancing shadows of the tree just behind it. And slowly, the leaves around you fall to the floor, and this creature with a <sighs> dissipates and seems to disappear. Nice. And you are no longer engulfed. Yay, team! Nice. <laughs> Woo. Guys, guys, I got hit by I got hit by a log. Right, I think his brothers are turning up. <laughs> <laughs> And now, now it's sharpening its, its arms into arrows and they're flying all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan, have inspiration, you son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Ripper, it is now your turn. If C, does that, that was your action and your bonus, unless you'd like to move. Stay where I am. Marvellous. Ripper, it is your turn. All right, I'm going to kind of run across the log. Yep. And then get to the other the other side of lack, probably probably vault lack maybe. Uh, I'd like to make me an acrobatics check. I'll be ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the help action. <laughs> oh, I haven't had my turn. Uh, just um, I want to just basically get to get to the side of him. So one south of him, and then um, and then I'll attack this 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 other tree. Okay. Right. Leafy thing. That's going to be a twenty-three to hit. It's probably ridiculously well tonight, folks. Well it's, done. Yeah, it's not going to last. Beginner's luck. Although I did get engulfed earlier, so yeah, that is true. And, and hit by a log. Um, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight points of damage with the first hit, bludgeoning, and then two for a pound, two for a pound. That is another. No, it's not another. That's just a dirty 20, that one. Hits. And that is another seven points of damage. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. As again, you twirl your staff um, a little bit weakened from the earlier encounter, but seemingly not as this um, large log flies around in your hands and you're sending leaves scattering left, right and centre. Is there anything else you would like to do? Uh, that's all I can do. That's movement. Uh bonus and action so thank you very much lack it is your turn then okay since we're going on craziness um lack moves his hands around and goes okay you and me okay could you please make me hmm. probably not it's going to be contested strength okay uh to see if you can hold him or mm -hmm. them Oh, I've, I've rolled a 19. <laughs> so that's... I've only got plus one, so that's a dirty 20. Well, they rolled a two. Okay. <laughs> with a minus. So uh, oh. they are negatively grappled. So <laughs> essentially, you reach in and... Control a d4 for me. Mm -hmm. Four. God. You take... Thank Four you, Paladin to... Dice, by the way, who haven't sponsored us yet, but they will do now. So... <laughs> Your Paladin Dice do four points of piercing damage to you as you Ouch. reach into the uh, swirling leaves of Cut death, off. patented. And nice. uh, you do manage to grasp what feels like... It's like grasping smoke that mm. has the texture of... Um, you know, like when you put... <laughs> it's a really weird call. Cool. Put like jelly in a balloon, but you don't quite fill it up enough so it's filled. It's just sort of like a little bit squidgy, a little bit runny. You can't. It like feels very of, viscous. Yeah. It's 
toys you get yeah. at the seaside where you yes them. the ones where you can squeeze yeah, them yeah, 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 that's yeah. brilliant i love those great call cool, brad that's definitely better than jelly in a jelly balloon, in a balloon. <laughs> um, it was giving yeah, me fun, fun house vibes it was taking me back to the 80s it was <laughs> that was it i was it was all over pat sharp um so, <laughs> so yeah that's you have successfully grappled this creature. okay so if i'm aware when you grapple someone you can move them half your speed right with you you can roll contested strength check to do that yes mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to drag it straight into the fire okay uh make another contested strength check please okay can i ask what contested means we both Thank roll you. whoever has the higher number wins oh i see thank you very much 13 in total okay this time they roll with their minus 14 okay i shall use my inspiration even. to re-roll that dice absolutely fine <laughs> that'll give me an 18 yay <laughs> you managed to move the leaf creature uh over towards the fire i'm going to say that's it for this turn because then you've had movement and action so i can move i can move 20 foot can't i yes so you can so move it on. all the way there yeah uh, so it's kind of where i'm going to put it there because it's sort of right by it and next turn yeah you can attempt to throw it in okay i want to like when i do i want to do the ken or ryu like throw over my <laughs> absolutely fine thank you uh, it That's... is the creature's turn now it doesn't seem too worried about being grappled though it's definitely worried about getting near the fire it is going to shriek out with an unholy power and i need everyone to make me a um, charisma save, please. Charisma. Oh, God. Oh, Christ. God. Oh, 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 right, right. So, if you get less than a 14. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> D did anyone save? Look at your yeah. face. You love it. Okay, okay. Everyone who got yellow. less than 14... We're yellow. Uh, ...you fall prone as this cry shrieks out. So you essentially drop to the floor and you are stunned. Oh, God. Oh, what does that do as an explain? effect? Yeah, so stunning sense. essentially means that you lose your next turn. <gasps> Rude. Horrible. What a Horrible. really good idea. Okay. okay. Sorry. Not yeah, whatever, he is, says with a grin. This creature's just trying to survive. <laughs> this poor leafling. Um, <laughs> that was its turn. So, Octavius, I believe you are stunned. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank That's you. Good, good, great yeah. acting, Phaser. great acting. <laughs> Phaser, I believe you are stunned. Oh, right. I don't know. Is that alright? Yeah. I'm a stage yeah. manager. I'm not an actor. Well, it was very theatrical. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, it did feel like it was of the theatre. Oh, good. You could yeah. get a, you can a ASM swing roll for that. Thank you. <laughs> Do you reckon? <laughs> Six myth. Um, I guess I'm. St oh yes, I'm stunned. I got twelve. You are stunned. Sadly, I'm stunning. Puts this background to Indeed. seed. I'm also stunned. Who is also stunned? <laughs> oh, oh, so good satisfying. Lord. Ripper, it is your turn then. Fuck. How much do you weigh? Um, that's a really good question. I'm about uh, ten and a half to eleven stone. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that is in kilograms quick, for. Our... Anyone want to do quick pounds conversion for that? For you me? can do that. You can do that. Okay, fine. I would like to. I would basically like to pick, pick Lack up, like he is. Uh, let's say he he is the stick. To, and the monster is the marshmallow to the s'mores we are about to create. Yeah. yeah. And I want to basically just lift him into the fire. Four of which one of them's the jelly and which one of them's the balloon? That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> Lack into the fire? No, 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 no. Like dangle, like dangle, because Lack's got his hands inside of this thing, right? Uh -huh. So I want to basically pick Lack up by his feet and then, like, like I mean, I just want to like say I was going operator. to throw him into the fire, not put myself in the fire. Yeah. Just... Yeah, yeah, but it's just to make sure that that like it burns, and then I can just pull you back out again afterwards. So, if can I ask though, if Lack is prone, does he not I... let him go? I am no, not, not prone. prone. Oh, you're not prone. Oh, Fortunately, the only two in yellow it. saved. So. Yeah. You and your, you and your paladin dice, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and me just being a paladin. So yes, <laughs> nice. So I'm going to ask you something, Ryan. Sure. 
Are you sure? <laughs> and me just being a paladin, so... Yes, nice. So, I'm going to ask you something, Ryan. Sure. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. No, don't ask that, because Ryan will say yes to that every time. <laughs> Marvelous. But, like, like, but like I'm not like I'm not throwing him in the fire. As I said, I'm like I'm like a boom operator and yeah, it, and right? I'm like a boom the, operator. I'm just dipping him in and then as soon as I see him out, I'm gonna just pull it back out again. To just clarify the explanation of the position for you. Sure. When Lack reached in, he didn't just put his hands in, he had to go into the leaf. So he is in there holding this creature to grapple it, essentially wrapping his arms around it. I see what you're doing, son. It's a great idea, but maybe okay. help me out. Rather than put me in a fire. <laughs> okay, how about this? Can I can I reach in, take a bit of damage, grab his grab his the belt that's holding his uh, his monk's robes on. So and then like you know like in films they lean someone over the edge but they still got a hand on them. And then just lean still, him into the. <laughs> I will still literally be in the fire. fire. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> great idea. Great idea. It's not a you great idea. This is the point. Try. Okay, just, okay. Just hold on a minute. Just the idea though. Not, hold no on execution. A minute. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Please, just the idea. And I can I basically turn my action into some kind of help action so that when Lack inevitably jumps into the fire in his turn, which is next, you can maybe pull him back out or something. Exactly, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. I that's what I mean. Yeah, but that's yeah. what I mean by grabbing the belt buckle and just yeah, pulling yeah, him yeah, in. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I will, just, I will allow I'm that. Yeah. Him. I'm securing absolutely him. Absolutely fine. And that's going to be my action. It's going to be a, the the help action on Lack. Okay, absolutely fine. Cool. Thank you. I that's appreciate I that. Do. Thank you for the not help putting me in the fire. And how that will go. <laughs> Okay, Lack, it is now your turn. Right, so with this, I, I'm now going to, um, like, turn 180, like, do a cartwheel with Ripper holding me out. And at the top of the cartwheel, I'm going to throw the leaves into the middle of the fire, if okay. possible. Uh, well, of course, contested strength again. Okay. But you are being helped, so helped I'm going to say you have advantage on this. Thank you, Ripper. Ooh. Ooh. So it's a 10 plus 1 and a much better 18 plus 1. So 11 or 19. Okay. How do you want to do this? <sighs> right, okay, Ripper. Let's do this to, Let's do this together, right? All right. So Ripper dives in, like f leaves flying around all over the place, and he grabs my belt. And as I feel that, I do this, this full cartwheel, but it goes a little bit too far. So I suplex him into the fire. The leaves go burning into the fire. And I just scream, Oh my God! And as I shout that, Ripper just yanks me out yeah and the leaves go burning up in this huge explosion of leaves everywhere and i like I, he, I keep going he lets go i double somersault three point landing right behind ripper and he's like full flex and i'm just like behind <laughs> iron man style <laughs> fantastic that's exactly what you do and as these leaves land there is a an unholy screech similar to the one you heard earlier but whereas before the flames went and then dissipated these flames don't go and you just see the leaves just disappear almost instantly as they're incinerated by the heat of the bonfire and you see the writhing black figure within crying some unholy language that gets quieter and quieter until there's just a, a whisper as these black being disintegrates into black smoke that rises out of the fire and we are now officially out of combat. Uh, oh. Go team. Gonna go. <laughs> Ripper's gonna go check check the other compatriots and like you know do like a uh, like the predator handshake to like lift them all up <laughs> and then lift and pull, pulls every person up. Tavius stands up by himself. <laughs> Lack runs straight up to his brother um, and doesn't help him out. Doesn't help him up from the ground. But just kind of leans in a way that might be helpful if yeah, Six yeah. Smith wanted to get and up. And Six just gets up by himself, but like yeah. is grateful to be in the same space. So he says something like, you know, brother, you have good skills. You learnt uh, um, an art or two at this school oh, alongside. Just luck, the really. Just luck, really. Oh, really? Just to turn oh, up okay. and down and, you know. You were always uh, uh, acrobatic when you were young, anyway, jumping around everywhere and, you know. I had a lot of time to do so, yeah. Very dangerous. Well, thank you. You ran into you know. the fire. I mean, why? What's life without a little bit of chaos, huh? Well, Just keep moving. Fire is something that any nobody should really play with in such a way. Talking of playing with fire, you're a parrot. You have a little bird on your shoulder. What is that about? Oh, it's a spirit. It has followed me around for some time. 
Ah. The herd is at this moment useless. Oh, that's not a very nice thing to say. <laughs> we all have our uses, friend, you know? Yeah, well, hopefully it finds its use. Ripper, Ripper goes to lift up Phaser and <laughs> says to her, are you okay? But says it in Gnomish. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. interesting. That's very good. Um, uh, Faisal will reply to you. Um, her gnomish is quite uh, book learned. It's not very, uh, you notice, it's not very colloquial gnomish. Um, mm. And uh, she says, holy cow, I don't like being this high. Please, please, please. Thank you so much <laughs> for picking me up. But I'm. Uh, can you put me please close to the ground, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> um, and uh, in that, she because uh, she's right next to Celia, she turns to Celia to see how she is and uh, if she needs help because she's been down this whole time. Celia is unconscious on the floor, so it seems. To find out any more, you would need to make a medicine check. May I? Of course you may. Let's do that. Um... I've got to find that in my big long list of skills that are hidden here somewhere. There it is. Right. Uh, that's a d20 again, right? Absolutely. And then I can uh, and I've got a 15 plus one is 16. So as you look her over, there doesn't seem to be. There are a few lacerations where the leaves hit. There doesn't seem to be anything else particularly wrong with her. The most remarkable thing is there's absolutely no burn marks on her from getting into the fire. The other interesting thing is yeah there doesn't seem to be any reason for her to be unconscious but as you sort of you know tap some water on her face or try and tap her to come around she doesn't seem to be waking up interesting her pulse um, is steady she's definitely alive but she's not waking up i walk over and right. cast healing word on her okay so you reach down and you release the healing magic and this aura of white light shimmers over the body and you feel the magic take Nothing happens. Blimey. In the meantime, well, can I have a look for... Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you weren't a medic uh, scout in the army, were you? Um, I was not, no. I just learned a couple of things. Um, I'd like to, as we're chatting and I'm trying to listen to people, I'd like to also see where the old woman has gone. Uh, the lovely old crone. So if you're talking to people at the same time, I'm going to say make a perception check with disadvantage. Okay, because I'm trying to look like I'm not. I'm trying to pay attention and respect uh, at the same time. Oh, oh, well, both of them were terrible, so that's absolutely fine. Um, I got a seven. A seven. Uh, you can't... Uh, you look around and you can't see Granny anywhere currently. Okay. Um, and then there's a tap on your shoulder. And you turn around, and it's Granny. Ah, oh, um, where were you during the fight, young lady? As I try and flatter her. I was, less of that young man, I was hiding. Now, what's wrong with Celia? Have you tried helping her? I cast um, healing on her. She is fine. I can't <laughs> see, Granny, I, I can't see what's, what's wrong with her. She just, I mean, maybe she's asleep? I don't know. But, mm. I mean, it's been very loud. I don't think I could have slept through that. So she bends down and she sort of rolls Celia over and she opens her eyelids and stares at her eyes. She takes a pulse. Um, she sort of puts her ear down and listens to Celia's chest. And then she says, oh, this is not good. This is not good. We can't be without our Presidious. Not at this time. We're going to have to send her to Cinderbane. Would, uh, I, I hate to ask this, but you seem like quite capable travellers. Would you mind escorting her? We we've got a cart, we can give you a mule, we can give you food for the journey, but uh, we need our Presidious, and this is beyond my skill at healing. Um, that was actually shoulder on Six Smith's shoulder and says, um, brother, I think, I think Cinder Bain was on our journey anyway. Yeah, shall we have a look at the map? Do you, you have the map, don't you? I do, I do, hang on. Um, and we'll ru rummage around the map while other people talk. I uh, um, I was actually on my way to Cinderbane as well. Um, I mean, you know, free heads. But, five, well, if you, six, put, you can pull me out was... of fires like that, you can um, definitely come along. Well, I can pull a cart, but you know. 
this is a very strange coincidence because I, I, my, my next plan was to go to Cinderbane. Perhaps I can come along as well. Well, you more the merrier. And you have uh, very um, fine hands. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> very, very humanoid bard, as you've been describing yourself. Um, care to uh, play some music along the way, you know? Um, you muted. 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 <laughs> um, turn the switch on. <laughs> Try again. Um, I was actually just going to ask if you could use a bard. You see, bards can be very helpful because I can sing you songs about how great you are. I love that, <laughs> right? <laughs> we can, we can work on, we can work on one on the way. That sounds uh, fantastic. Now, Sylvain, it's. I will be glad to aid you. Yeah, you know, we might not be able to stay for long. You know, um, it's 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 on our way, but not one of our major destinations, I don't think. But uh, you know, if you want to go, brother, we can I go. It's uh... just one thing before we leave, though. Um, I would like to investigate the two locations where the oil spirits arose. Make me an investigation or arcana check. A fifteen. I have something I'd like to do as well afterwards. Absolutely. Mm. Me too. That is a 16. So we're going to come back to what you find in a minute then. Uh, Faiza, what would you like to do? Um, I'd like to go over and check the oily material as an uh, artificer. I'm interested in all sorts of fun things. Okay. So I would also like to check that stuff. So if you'd like to head over and make a, uh, intelligence, a, a intelligence or arcana check. And then six myth, what would you like to do? Um, I'd like to um, go over to the oil with Octavius, just slightly away from the old woman, and I'd like to oh, for, I'd, and I'd like to take Lack with me, and just as if we're casually going, and I'd like to ask Lack if I could borrow the bracelet, and I'll and I'll ask Octavius. I said, you know, I recognised you were doing some sort of sorcery earlier on. I wonder if you could cast a tech magic on this bracelet we just acquired. I will I... in a moment as I. I would love grass. I'd love to go and talk to Granny as well if that's okay. Okay. So uh we'll do that first and we're gonna come back to the oil mm -hmm. creature in a moment. Granny, um who what happened here? Who who might does this happen every year at the festival? No, this is the first time this has ever happened. This is oh, very unusual. Who might have done this? What might have done this? I don't think this was a person. The spirits, those were spirits. They were not happy spirits. Dark days, strange things happening. I'm not sure. You travelled more than I have, dearie. I've lived here my whole life. Well, I'm just glad we were here to um, to help out. Oh, so am I. Well, look, um, why don't we go sit down, have another glass of cider, while my friends do what they're doing? And I'll take Granny, like and take her gently to the to the table okay as you do that we come back then to the one that was obviously burned in the fire is lost but the other one that had been shot with an arrow has dissipated and there is a faint faint residue of something it's mostly evaporated into the air let's see how we did with the, our checks um octavius and phaser how did you do on those arcana checks i got a uh, 17. instead of me i got a six <laughs> So, Faser, you're fascinated by it, but you don't really see a lot that relates to your particular insights into mechanical things or um, harnessing arcane powers in a mundane way. Um, it seems weirdly spiritual. You know, there was something there, but it's not something you've really experienced before. Octavius, you get a sense of wrongness again. Uh, there's nothing... There's not enough for you to recover or to take with you, but there is a sense with your investigation that something tastes wrong is the best description. Have I ever come across this taste before? You have not. Something brand new. Okay, is there anything else anyone would like to do? I think Ripper is just picking, he picks up the orc. Well, can I pick up the orc? Yes, you can. Okay, fine. 
Um, I pick up the orc and I'm taking her to get prepared to be travelled. I'm and preparing the, the cart um, for the for the team. Just the uh, detect magic if Octavius would be so kind. Yes. Um, on the bracelet I, to see. Of course, I will do that. Um, before I start, this feels wrong. This this whole event is very wrong. We should be extremely cautious on our journey. Okay. But add, there's nothing natural or, or mechanical about that oil. oil. And then I will ritual cast mm. detect magic for ten minutes on the bracelet. So ten minutes passes. If does anyone like to do anything in that ten minutes? Um. Lack would like to um, start tidying the place up, so like everyone's um, chairs that have been knocked over, or any glasses or whatever, and and also he's gonna once he's done that, he's kind of trying to chippy the kids around to help, so that they've got something moment, yeah. to do. Yeah. The crowd comes back and they are starting to return and see what you've done, and thank you for defending them. You know they're offering you food and drink for the night. So obviously you're staying in the hostel anyway, but there's a great deal of support. But the majority of people are just picking things up at this point. Um, I'd like to help, and if there's any way that I can use my tinker tools to fix things, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Um, I've also got potter's tools, so maybe if there's any broken plates or cups, because they're rather poor. I know they've only got one one drinking table, so. Maybe I can fix the vessel there or something. Absolutely, that's exactly what's happening. You use your tinker skills to repair some of the chairs that have broken and the tankards which have been dented and just the pans that the handles have fallen off, those little things that are all around at any kind of outdoors bake-off that were trampled or damaged in the stampede from the small gathering. Anyone else during the ritual casting time? Um, I'll also help with the tidying up um, but at one point, while sort of trying to help with pick thing, picking things up and carrying things around, uh, I'm going to do a quick beat on the drum, and a spectral hand appears to help me, um, and starts kind of wandering around, picking up glasses, doing little bits, um, just sort of assisting. I As might... you do that, people <laughs> look shocked. Not in a terrified way, but uh, you would very quickly get the sense that magic is not... Not everyone has magic in Chinelo, so what you've done is miraculous and amazing. They're not frightened of it, just very impressed. Um, I might get a little bit distracted about that spectral hand and come over, come over, and uh, talk to Seed. Um, how long has that been around? <laughs> is it? Does that just pop up? <laughs> is it? Is, what's it made of? How do you oh. make it? What's going on? Um. Well, this is my magic hand. Um. <laughs> It's a perfectly normal magic hand. It's nothing to worry about. Oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, okay. I think I can tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm from Zawati. You know, magic is, is, is useful around ours and very helpful. Um. So that this, I've just never seen one before. This is just very, very fascinating. There's no, there's no, oh. there's no gears in it. <laughs> I like this. No, no gears at all. What, what is a gear? Oh my gosh. I'm going to have so much fun showing you mechanical things. <laughs> if you've never seen a gear before, we're going to be good friends. This is going to be good. <laughs> I have a good feeling. And and Faiza has a very good feeling about this friendship because she loves showing people new things because of her love of new things. So this is going to go well. <laughs> Marvellous. During this time, the you've been focusing on this ritual, uh, Octavius, and you feel forces coalesce and align and you focus them on this object and what you detect is nothing <clears throat> it seems to be an ordinary bracelet it is just a trinket and I hand it back. <laughs> thank you i know your time is valuable on your new journey friend so 10 minutes is is important oh, I know, so. my time is now the opposite of valuable <laughs> Ah, uh, valuable to yourself only, then I guess, or valuable to yourself. I, yes, I that's spend it however I please. Ah, uh, that's good to hear. Can you spend some of it telling me uh, the name of your wonderful friend that perches on your shoulder? Oh, you mean the bird? Uh, the yeah, exactly the bird. Yes. Yes, it doesn't have a name. I did, and clearly not your friend either. Okay, okay. Um, it holds. <laughs> 
special place in my life. Oh, okay, like my brother, Lark. But a or like the urn that contains my mother's ashes. But there are many unpleasant memories associated with the bird. Oh, my friend, I understand. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. We shall see. But for now, okay. I, will, I will deal with it myself. It, thank you for your concern. Ah, yeah, 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 no problem. So as the evening draws to a close, you see that they bring out a, a mule and a cart and they tell you in the morning it will be stocked and provisioned. They offer you a night's rest as your first adventure together draws to a close. You, is everyone choosing to go to bed? Uh, I will keep first watch. Okay. I, oh, I uh, assuming when everyone's clearing up, I really want to... I think I want to go find that kid of the of the minor of the minor dad. Yeah. And I want to say to him, "Listen, kid. Listen, kid. I understand. You know, you got to do, got to help your father. But honestly, no one would believe what happened here last night. Get it? Get it? All right. All right. Stay safe. And then he <laughs> walks off. He runs after you and grabs you and goes, "Oh, thank you, sir." My name's Tarn. I'm going to tell everyone that I met you. Thank you, Tarn. And you know what? When I'm famous, I'll probably remember you too. <laughs> <laughs> Tarn, Tarn, young man. And Sixsmith calls him over as he's scampering away. And I think for the sort of first half hour of the watch, because I think he's Six would be a little bit more concerned... He'd be interested in seeing how the Chinellan army maybe trains their soldiers. He'd like to see whether the watch is safe. He trusts, so far, his companions, but just wants to just observe and just spend the first half hour awake. So he's been carving the bow into a slightly more sort of um, uh, acceptable tool. And he hands it to Tarn and says, you know, something like, uh, you, you may need this. Better to have it or not need it. Not that I'm a gun. Not that I'm some kind of weird NRA gun lobbyist. That's not what I mean. But like, better to ha better to have it. Better to have it, uh, especially after today. And I hand him the. Oh. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. That, thank you. That's very kind of you. And he, he runs off to find his uh, father from earlier. Anyone else like to do anything before they turn in? Uh, I th go on, yeah, Baza. You go first. Thank you very much. No, no, it's fine. Mine's um, very little. I think Baza's uh, got a little. Um, uh, got, got a little prayer ritual before she goes to bed <laughs> in the morning, uh, and so she says her little prayers to Wandra, um, and just uh, just prays for um, herself and for m my centre um, and uh, her mentor that she's looking for, um, and hopes that she finds him and finds home soon, and then she'll go to bed. Probably um. ever. Lack will just crouch down in that ridiculous style again um, and as he wraps the leather bracelet with the stone in it goes underneath his slightly singed hand wrappings now um, and he, st he stares into the fire for for far too long he's, he's meditating on the way that the flames move and they don't move uniformly he likes the way that they move sort of chaotically but secretly, he's also looking straight through at his brother and just making sure that he's OK. He was sitting there with his hand on the urn, I think. Six Smith with the hand on his on their mother's urn, I think, while he's being watched. OK, anything else before the night draws in? So as sleep eventually falls to the party, it seems restful. In the middle of the night, you all share a dream share dream share dream share dream dream share dream it's it manifests differently for each of you enough that you remember fragments in the morning it's like a voice from a distance yes the words are indistinct the image is indistinct you see the leaf uh, the leaflings t swirling again you hear their cries Behind their cries is almost like the echo of something else. And 
in the distance you can hear the cry of a woman it sounds like a, a female's voice and you just hear them avoid something saying they've returned and that's where we're going to end tonight's episode <laughs> yes <good>. yeah. <laughs> nice. 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 nice Johnny fun. cracking cracking so, work ladies and gentlemen it has been a pleasure to have the first episode of Blood and Song we shall see you next week and may the great goddess guide you in all your days <laughs> everyone Goodbye. Oh.